Hello friends, hope you're well. Virtua Fighter is an excellent, if somewhat misunderstood, series. Many of the conventions that you learn in other fighting games are twisted, at times even inverted in Virtua Fighter, which can be confusing, especially if you're coming from Tekken. Once you get past those initial hurdles, though, you'll find a game with oceans worth of depth to explore, geared firmly towards close-range aggression and getting into your opponent's head. No other fighting game has a system so finely tuned towards facilitating and rewarding reads. And with this series, we're going to help you get your foot in the door, so that you can dive head, fist, and elbow first into the wonderful world of Virtua Fighter. As with the character overviews, we're delighted to be working with VF veteran Wireman. Take it away. This is a series designed for taking you, the wave dashing, down forward one mashing, Korean back dashing techna, and giving you all the tools you need to hit the ground running in Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown. This series follows the TBS Tekken tutorial format, playlist and description, looking at what's similar, what's different, and what's going to be completely brand new to a player making the move from four buttons to three. By the end of this episode, you will know why every Virtual Fighter character is a grappler, why you shouldn't get caught turtling, and why we don't backdash. Like the Tekken tutorial videos, we'll be using specific characters for each concept. If you want to know more about any of them, check out our character intro playlist. So the good news is that everything you know about the three main attack heights is pretty much the same. You'll be paying attention to highs, mids and lows just like in Tekken, and blocking them at the same heights that you currently do. Highs are guarded high, or you duck them. Mids are guarded high as well, and you guard lows low. The only difference here is that there's one additional attack that you should be thinking about, the throw. This is because throws come out mostly high and mostly are faster than your fastest conventional attacks. So they're often a main part of your offensive mix-ups. While Tekken Offense focuses on mixing between your mids and lows, Virtual Fighter favours mids and throws through a 50-50 concept known as Nitaku. More on that later. For now, you'll still be guarding either high or low depending on which one they go for, but it's worth bearing in mind that you're ducking the throw when going low, not protecting your shins. Alongside this, throws fit within the classic rock, paper, scissors of Virtual Fighter with guard beating attack, attack beating a throw, and a throw beating a guard almost 100% of the time. Also, the speed of Virtual Fighter's throws means you can't react to the throw like you can in Tekken, which has its pros and cons. You have to commit to escaping a throw, but you're also not sat there trying to figure out was that a one grab or was it a really weird looking one plus two. So for this first Tekken to Virtual Fighter example, we'll be taking a look at a classic Tekken high-low 50-50, Paul's Demolition Man Death Fist mix-up and converting it into Virtual Fighter logic. So in Tekken here, you either block the low to stop the Demo Man, or you block high to stop the dreaded Death Fist. Choose wrong, and there'll be huge consequences. It's at this point that it's worth mentioning that 50-50 as an archetype does not exist in Virtual Fighter. While Paul can be considered a 50-50 character, you will find that every character in Virtual Fighter has access to 50-50s as clear-cut and as damaging as Paul's demo Death Fist. All of them. This means even the tiniest Bottle Rocket characters have the imposing threat of a gigantic grappler at close range, where you need to be thinking about whether or not taking the throw is a risk that you're willing to bear. So with that in mind, we'll stick with Akira here and set up a situation where they're close up and have some frame advantage, more on frame advantage later too. And now as the defender, you have two things to be afraid of. In place of the Demolition Man, there's a high damage throw that could give them positional advantage, a ring out, or even a combo. And in place of the Death Fist, there is an array of counter hit mids that they can choose from. Again, leading to very high damage combos. However, because the mix-up is an attack or a throw, not two different attack heights, you don't just have those block high, block low responses to defend yourself with. In many instances, you can attack through the throw attempt, an offensive technique known as the Abari, and in many instances, you can evade the counter hit mid. Just bear in mind that the throw will beat the evade, and the mid will counter hit the Abari. 
but what matters here is that there are table turning offensive options front and centre in your defensive tool set. And having these ready, not just turtling up behind your guard, is a big switch in mindset when moving to Virtual Fighter. If you're going to have to bet on yourself, you may as well bet big. There are also more defensive movement choices that we'll get onto later that cover both of these options as well. And with that mindset switch, that brings us on to the concept of turtling and why you won't see that much in Virtual Fighter either. While in Tekken, turtling is about defending well, but also more so moving exceptionally well, movement plays a slightly different role in Virtual Fighter. While in Tekken your movement enforces things like ranges, 50-50s and whiff punish options, in Virtual Fighter a lot of the match takes place in that range 0, range 1 space, and movement itself is enforced off strikes and decisions. This means that a game plan of frustrating the opponent into pushing buttons, up close or far away, isn't particularly fruitful, unless you have a character with very specific evasive options. So if you're not controlling the fight with block punishing or whiff punishing, what are you doing to take the upper hand? Rather than controlling space forwards and backwards to pressure mistakes, you're more likely controlling the space left and right by inciting evasion with your mids and shutting them down through your throws and circulars, which are your tracking moves. And at this point you might start to see that this Nitaku situation we were talking about earlier isn't a simple 50-50 scenario and more of a state of gameplay that you're always flowing in and out of with all of the characters and where most of the big decisions are happening. There's no one right answer, but layers and layers of test and response instead. So here, the Jackie puts themselves into a situation where a big scary mid is on the table, but they want to scare the opponent out of evading so that they can land it, or maybe something even scarier next time. So they set up, predict the opponent will want to evade away from the mid and the nearest wall or ring edge, and so they lock it down with a slower half circular that catches the opponent and even grants them some bonus stuff for reading them right. Next time this might scare them into evading the other way, which can eat a half circular in the other direction, or a full circular that tracks both ways. Maybe they freeze up and get thrown, maybe they anticipate the throw and try to a barrier through it, and then they get hit with the very mid that they were trying to stay away from in the first place. This here is actually where the cool, expressive side of Virtual Fighter comes out to play. In the same way that movement is a big analogue component in Tekken, where players can express their offence and defence, picking the right options in Nitaku situations, or while setting up Nitaku situations, tends to be what defines your personality as a player in Virtual Fighter. You have lots of moves and options at your disposal, and whether you're on offence or defence, what you choose here will dictate where the fight goes next. Pretty much all of your move list is functional as you come to learn your character as well. And lastly, this brings us on to movement. Some previous versions of Virtual Fighter have been much more Tekken like, with things like Korean box stepping, Taiwanese dash stepping, and a whole host of wave dash esque moves available, as well as some sidestepping panic move options. The current era of Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown still has a complex movement system but, as mentioned before, does not lean on ranged positioning to determine the flow of the fight, rather it focuses on up-close positional choices to control momentum. Alongside not wanting to use long-range space and abate responses from the opponent, attempting to play a keep out will often end in dismay in Virtual Fighter also. So focus on doing well offensively and defensively in the close settings. Get comfortable with observing and adapting in a jab range first, because this is where 90% of the fight is going to be. Similarly, and this may hurt to hear the most coming from Tekken, but put that backdash away. It is seldom a strong escape option in Virtual Fighter. It gets blown up by things like sidekicks, and it can even suffer some extra attack properties if they manage to crack you with something on your way out. As a rule, if you're thinking of backdashing, there's probably a more versatile option. An example of good movement in Virtual Fighter would likely come from the dash cancelling system. Here, Sarah has been put at a disadvantage, and anticipates a fast high in her direction to shut down forwards and backwards movements, or a high throw to shut down the side to side. Maybe they want to bet hard that it's either of these things, so they crouch dash to escape under both. This is where we'll start to see some of that cancelling, because straight away you can actually cancel that into a guard as well, giving you a fuzzy guard high and low. Or perhaps fearing a mid, they may want to deal with the throw directly, or setting up an opportunity off the high or mid attack should it happen. So they perform an evading throw escape ETE and react with something of their own if the throw doesn't happen. Or further still, 
Maybe they anticipate a string of high offense or a tick throw, so they evade crouch dash cancel or ECDC, which allows them to duck the jab and the attack or throw follow up, giving them a great window for opportunity. Or fearing all of the above and a bit of the unknown, they can perform an evade and throw escape guard ETEG, or an evade crouch dash cancel into a lazy throw escape an ECDC into an LTE and play it safe. The point I'm trying to make here with all these letters is that there are many cool movement options in Virtual Fighter, and good movement and joystick dexterity will still benefit you like it does in Tekken, but it's much tighter, much less analog, and a little less visible if you don't know what you're looking for. So if, as the original guide said, Tekken is movement, then Virtual Fighter by comparison is fighting in a phone booth. We'll get to that later too. Thanks for watching the first of several guides to help turn transferable Tekken techniques into viable Virtual Fighter virtuosity. Next time we'll be covering the differences in pokes, frames and sidestepping. I'll see you there. Friends, thank you so much for watching and a massive shout out to our patrons for supporting this channel. We hope you feel a little bit more comfortable and confident about getting into Virtual Fighter. Please bear in mind that the VF community is one of the most welcoming and friendliest out there, so you're in good hands should you decide to take the plunge. Have a good day all, and we'll catch you again real soon.